Hey, hello, welcome to Open Mic VO. It's great to see you all here tonight. My name is Graham Spicer and I moderate these little get togethers on Sunday evenings. This event is about us getting together as a community to share stories and share knowledge, uh, to both get and give advice, and to collaborate on problems that participants might pose to the group. Uh, tonight is open topic night. Any question or comment related to voice acting is welcome. Uh, whether it's performance or the voiceover biz, home studios, we have VO Atlanta coming up soon. So if there's any questions about VO Atlanta, let's uh, get those on the table. Anything with regards to voiceover, go for it. Uh, this group is about being positive and supportive of each other. Uh, there's participants tonight at all different stages in their careers, but we're all professionals nonetheless and deserve to be retreated with the appropriate respect. So to those of you who are new members of the voiceover community, welcome. We're glad you're here. And there's no such thing as a silly question. Go ahead and ask away. So the rules of participation are simple. Uh, please mute yourself when you're not actively participating in a conversation. Um, please unmute yourself if you do have something to contribute. Well, I don't want to, uh, don't want to dissuade you from participating. But just if you're not actively speaking, please mute yourself. It's clicking on the little microphone icon in the lower left-hand corner of your Zoom meeting screen. And you can just toggle yourself on and off by clicking there. Second rule, be nice. Be nice to each other. And the third rule is we're recording. The recordings are posted to YouTube. And I can't really control where they end up from there. So just keep that in mind if you are sharing any sort of proprietary information. Want to take a moment to thank VoiceZam.com for sponsoring tonight's Open Mic VO. VoiceZam is a unique demo player that, amongst many other things, allows casting directors to zero in on specific reads in your demo. Learn more at VoiceZam.com, and if you use the promo code OPENMIC, O-P-E-N-M-I-C, you're going to get double the length of your free trial. So let's get started. Uh, once you see that I've unmuted you, uh, please go ahead and ask the first question or make the first comment or uh, mute yourself, one or the other. Takes me just a second to uh, go through this process. Um, so first of all, just to get started, just by show of hands, is there anyone um, in tonight's audience that is going to VoiceOver Atlanta? Just curious. Uh, I'm going to be there, so I'm actually moderating a uh, moderating a panel on uh, business and marketing for uh, VoiceOver. Just curious to see who else is going to be attending. Maria says she's going to be there. That's awesome. Okay, so a couple of questions are coming into the Q&A box. <laughs> Haley says, Graham, at the end of every Sunday night, you say, get out there and audition lots. And Haley's asking, can we talk a little bit about the sources of auditions? Um, are the opportunities to audition primarily coming through agents? Um, online casting sites? Great question. Um, who's got some thoughts on sources of auditions? Typically, when I say that, I'm referring, you know, my audition sources are normally my agents, and I've got an agent here in Toronto. I've got one in Atlanta, I've got one in Chicago. Uh, so those are the source, and, and I do participate in both voices.com and voice123.com. 
don't audition on Voices.com very frequently, uh, but I am fairly active on Voice123.com. Anyone have any thoughts on sources of auditions? Still trying to unmute a few people here. Anyone have any thoughts on sources of auditions beyond agents and online casting sites? Uh, I guess I'll chime in in the uh, deafening silence. Um, Hello, Michael. Hi, Graham. Uh, so yeah, this is Michael Schwalbe uh, in North Hollywood at the moment. And I, uh, you know, it's kind of the million dollar question. Uh, it's what everybody wants to know is where, where you find work at. And there maybe is another question that isn't being asked, which is uh, not just where do I find auditions, but where do I find work? And they're not, uh, they're not synonymous. Um, because if you're going out and and meeting people or talking to production houses in your area, uh, frequently you can just be hired for things without auditioning, which is ultimately where you want to be because auditions, if you're good, you might only be booking one out of every 75 to 100 auditions you're doing. And um, depending on the, the avenue, you know, some, some you'll have better luck with different places. but if you're making connections and making relationships with people that need what you do, uh, you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of work just getting hired. So maybe rather than looking for audition routes, which are going to generally, especially in this country, going to be very clogged with other aspiring talent, uh, try to make relationships, join your uh, local um, uh Commerce, uh, what am I trying to say? Chamber commerce. Of commerce. Chamber of Commerce, that's it. Yeah, join your local Chamber of Commerce. Go to business networking things in your city. Um, obviously, these tactics will be more useful if you're in a, a larger city. Um, some of you that are in kind of the middle of nowhere might be a little tougher. Um, but, you know, and then don't be afraid to just Google production houses in France, production houses in uh you know, the Middle East, uh, production houses around and look for whatever your genre is and then just email them and, uh, and then email them a couple more times every few months until they start listening to you. And, uh, and hopefully you'll start finding work and then just, you know, keep your eyes and ears out for like where other people are. If you hear like, Oh, such and such casting is doing a thing, Google such and such casting and then see if they've got a submission protocol on their website or something. And then over time, you'll accumulate audition then avenues. Yeah, it's interesting, um, Michael, that I had, a, um, I had a, a relative that was living in Dubai for a period of time. And I went to visit and I realized when I got to Dubai, wow, there's a whole bunch of English language radio stations. They all are producing English language ad, like they have, they're full of English language ads and they're typically all British. And uh, I thought that there was probably going to be a market for a North American sounding voice for, uh, for ads in Dubai. And, and I reached out to a couple of the stations and got some responses. So, you know, you're right. I think that there's work, you know, lurking around everywhere. We just have to seek it out. Um, another question, and it kind of, and it kind of um, is a segue from, from the first one. Uh, I think this was Pat that asked this. I have a demo and was considering going to a tech conference there where there would be lots of representatives from companies that do e-learning. Would this be a good place to start if I've not, if I've not booked any other type of job? Um, so that's a good question. And, and Michael, I'll, I'll pick on you again for a moment because I know that you have used conferences of various types to help build your business. And uh, 
you know, I know that you've done that successfully when it came to video games, as an example. Have you gone to other types of conferences to try and secure other types of work? Uh, I have researched several other kinds. Um, I haven't really pulled the plug on and really like gone for many of them, which I, I really probably should. Um, my, uh, yeah, like you said, I did that pretty successfully with video games and it's still paying off. Um, I then was thinking, trying to be creative of like, what's a, an industry that maybe could use my services that uh, you wouldn't normally think of. And I was like, well, what about like, realtors that need you know narrators for home tours and such so i started like researching uh, like realtor conferences and such and talking to i talked to some friends of mine who were full-time realtors and uh, ended up deciding that that it wasn't a it wasn't really as promising a market as i thought like most of the realtors even the high-end ones i talked to were like yeah we just don't see many guided narrated home tour videos uh, around, but then I've also looked at, you know, animation conferences and, uh, and such like that. So there's, you know, be creative. And one of the basic tenets of sales is know who your clients or your, your prospective clients are, know where they are, and then go, f go meet them kind of thing. Go so like, you don't, you don't just sit there and wait yes. for them. What? I say, yes, you, you figure out where they are and go forth, young yeah. man. And yeah, talk to, and talk to them. Exactly. So, like, you, you have to be proactive. So, um, I think going to conferences, if you can stomach the, the expenditure, because it's not cheap, you know, not only are you paying for travel costs to get to wherever they are, but then you have to pay for hotels, and usually there's a, an entrance fee or something to get into them. Um, so, it's it's laying but you're hopefully laying groundwork that then will pay off in the long term so if you have a longer view of, of your business that'll uh potentially be a good thing to pursue there was um a participant who who's been on these uh sunday evening calls frequently and she works in the e-learning business so um, it, um again i think it was pat that asked this question or brought this up and and she mentioned that there are several conferences out there specifically for people who are in you know the e-learning business and sorry about that um there are several people out there that are in the e-learning business so several conferences and that uh, it's it would be unusual she says for uh voice actors to show up to one of these conferences, but it wouldn't necessarily be unwelcome because most of the people attending these conferences are in the market. They are out there actively casting and looking for voice actors for uh, for their products. And it, these are people that normally, they're not gonna send out a casting call and want you know 75 auditions. If they think you're gonna be able to do it and if they think that you know, your voice is going to be appropriate, they're going to put it forward to their client. And if the client doesn't say no, and usually they won't, then you could very well pick up a pretty decent job that way. So, um, you know, so Pat, I think that you have a, a, a pretty decent idea there. You just need to figure out a way to, you know, how are you effectively going to network once you get to the, the uh, once you get to the conference? You're going to need to be able to hand out business cards. Obviously, it'd be nice if you could actually hand out your uh, your demo on like a little uh, USB key or something. Um, there was um, there's a very clever voice actor by the name of Bill Lord who had what I think is the neatest business card I've ever seen because it was a a plastic standard size business card, but it would fold there's this little tab that folded out of the business card and it was a usb key that you could plug into your computer and listen to his demo it was brilliant um they cost him a fair amount of money i think he said they they cost him six or seven dollars a piece which is a lot of money uh, but if you're getting them into the hands of the exact right people it's really a small price to pay uh sandra's off i had a follow-up question for michael and i guess it tags onto what pat was saying if you're joining these uh, chambers or whatever 
is it worthwhile having a booth at a local event or are you better off just walking the halls? Good question. I, I haven't personally done the Chamber of Commerce, like the local Chamber of Commerce route. Um, Michael, do, have you ever actually done it? And if so, like, would it make sense to, would it make more sense just to walk the halls or do you actually think that it, you know, taking a little hundred dollar booth might make sense. I always, whenever I go to conventions and conferences and such, I just walk the halls. Um, I, I feel like being static is uh, a great way to, to interact with fewer people. Um, but uh, I think it's cheaper and probably more effective to just walk around, have lots of cards ready um, and, and just meet people at their booths. Uh, but you know, there's arguments to be made either way. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm not sure that the expense of, I, I think that for two reasons, I would tend to shy away from a booth. First of all, I don't, I'm not sure that you're going to get a lot of extra value for the expense of actually, you know, renting the booth. The second thing is that you're tethered to the booth and you can't go anywhere. And I tend to like at those events to kind of be able to move around to various, you know, various groups that are having conversations and introducing myself rather than waiting for people to have to approach me. And especially like a voice actor at a chamber of commerce thing is going to be a little bit unusual. You're not selling the typical, you know, small business insurance or, um, you know, you're a car rental company or, or, you know, some of the other, you know, types of companies that would most often be at those types of um of events people aren't going to quite know what to do with you and i think you're better off approaching them than having you know sitting in a booth and having them uh, approach you uh jeff has a good a good uh question here jeff says i'm a part-timer works works as a full-time day job i can only devote about three hours a day to voiceover and most of that is already tied up and committed in recording and editing mostly audiobooks, uh, he says. So since he has relatively few non-recording hours available, what's going to be the best use of that little bit of time he has in order to move his career forward? And I guess I would say there's really two specific directions one is focus on improving your performance and you know constantly be i mean you really should be getting some coaching and um, finding a coach and and working with a coach and i think that that's going to be an important part of the little bit of time that you have available and then in business development activities um and I guess I'd like to throw it open to the floor with regards to if you only have a, you know, X amount of hours, you only have a, a very finite amount of hours available to you for business development activities, what would you prioritize? What would you do first when it came to business development? I know there's some good people here on this call tonight because I can see you by name. So um, I'm sure someone's got some thoughts on um, from a business development standpoint. And you don't have to be an old pro, an old expert to render an opinion on this. You can be a newbie, but maybe you've got some sales experience and you've got some thoughts on this. Don't hesitate to, to pipe up. Sorry, I'm just making some notes here at the same time. Anyone have any thoughts on prioritizing business development activities?
Okay, so let's table that for the moment then. And if someone does come up with um, does come up with some thoughts on that, please let us know. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, I have a rookie question. As I'm, I think this was from Damon. I have a rookie question as I learn the etiquette of the industry. My agent sent me an audition for a project, which he then found on Voices.com. He as in Damon, not the agent. Uh, Damon then found on Voices.com as well. The amount through uh, Voices was slightly less than the amount quoted for the agency submission. Um, is the client, so, so Damon's question is, is the client out of line for posting their job with both agencies and through a pay to play site like voices.com. And is this something that we see often and is it something that you can expect to see in the future? Sorry, I'm just unmuting a few more people here as they've joined the call. So once again, agent sent an audition for a project. Same project was on Voices.com. Um, the pricing was slightly different. Voices.com was offering less, which is no big surprise because they are known to pocket a certain amount of it. Um, is this typical? Um, is, it, is it unusual to see something posted to an online casting site, a pay-to-play site, and also sent out for submissions through talent agents. Hey, Graham, this is James in New Jersey. James, how you doing, man? Good, how you doing? Good. Um, it kind of, it, that's a kind of a, it depends kind of a question. Was it a union job or a non-union job? Um, Damon is new to the business, so I'm guessing it was a non-union job, but Damon, correct me if I'm wrong. Because I don't know that it was there a, are- It was a non-union job. Okay. I don't know that there are a whole lot of union jobs that are on the pay to play sites, but if it's a non-union job, your agent is going to get a cut if you book the job. So, um, I, and I don't know what the percentage the agent that he's contracted with would do uh, by union rules. It's only 10%. Uh, so that's skimmed off the top right away. So it depends on um, what the rest of it's going to be for your time and your effort. Uh, I don't know whether it's unusual or not. I would probably tend to think it isn't since it's an, a non-union thing because that's kind of a free for all. Yeah. You know, it's funny, James, and you are a union actor, right? If I remember right. Yeah. I've been, a, I've been in the union since 1980. Forever. Yeah. Um, and I'm a non-union actor and I got to tell you, because I think that you, most people on this call know is that I have a, a, a fairly um, strong interest in, in the, the online casting sites and in the ethics of how they operate. And, you know, it's, it's a topic that's always been of interest to me. And I watch them pretty closely. And I have to tell you, um, it's not very often that I stumble across a job that I received through my agent and uh, or one of my agents and also was posted to an online casting site. What's more common is to see the same job posted on both voices.com and voice one, two, three and on, on multiple uh, pay to place. Yeah. Yeah. Often there's a big price discrepancy as well. Uh, that is more common than to see, than to have a job arrive at me both through the online casting site and through uh, and through an agency. I, that well, because is, I, I would think through an agency, I mean, there's going to be a huge discrepancy in what the, what the outlay is going to be because, I mean, you're dealing with the middleman too, um, as opposed to, you know, just paying the pay to play to have your, your uh, audition listed. It, it seems a little screwy to me. <laughs> yeah, the agencies, even the non-union agents, the ethical ones are not taking any more than, I mean, usually they have an agreement with you of 15% or 20%. I mean, there's a, there's a few non-union agents that are charging 20%, but they're not supposed to take more than that. 
Right. right, but I'm talking about like the client outlay. If if the the pay to play is only offering you a certain amount, uh, is the client paying uh, the agent the fee on top of paying pay to play to list their their job listing? How do the the non union agents call their auditions? Okay, one more time. Run that past me. Well, I know that for union uh, auditions, it comes through something called uh, breakdown service, or it used to be through uh, voice uh, voice bank right. uh, that they would call a lot of their auditions from. But I don't know where the non-union agents call their auditions from. Do they get them from the pay to plays uh, or do they, they have their own breakdown service uh, where they... T typically the non-union agents have relationships with the production companies in their local marketplace. And they are receiving the submissions almost always through, a, uh, through just local contacts, or they used to receive non-union jobs through voicebank.net, which is now part of voices.com. Right. I'm not sure kind of how that has evolved because I understand that just as of like 10 days ago, uh, voicebank.net is shut down and all of the projects that used to be distributed, all of the breakdowns that used to be distributed through voicebank.net are now going through voices.com. And I, I'm not sure how that's working and how that's. Yeah, that's still an out. evolving situation. I think it's an evolving situation. Absolutely. Yeah. The, so, uh, but, but what I'm saying is uh, so if the agencies, the non-union agencies are getting auditions through their connections and, and private things like that. And the same client is, is also putting up an audition on one of the pay to plays that is, that is paying less than the agent would be getting you because that's their job is to get you as much money as they can out of the client. Um, is his question, which one should I audition for? I mean, you, you would take the one that your agent got you. <laughs> Yeah, you always go with the agent for sure. No, his question was more just generally, how off is this? Does this happen very often? And um, and should do should I expect to see this a lot more in the future? So it was really a more general question than that. Um, William Hensel is asking: Is there a link to who does those USB business cards that I mentioned? Um, you know what, um, Bill, what I'll do is uh, I'll have to phone my friend Bill Lord and ask him where he had them done. I'm sure if you just did a Google search, you'd find it. But I'll ask him where he had them done because uh, he was very happy with the outcome from his, uh, his little experiment. Sorry, I'm just uh, trying to catch up on some trying to catch up on some uh, Q and A's here. Uh, Damon has just a little bit more info on that, uh, on that situation. He says that um, the amounts between the posting on Voices.com and on uh, the, the info that came through from his agent, uh, they, there wasn't an outrageous uh, difference between the two. It's not like it was twice as much money from the agency. Um, and he definitely went with the agent. Uh, he definitely submitted through his agent. I'll always go with the flesh and blood relationship rather than one sent by an algorithm. I couldn't have said it better myself. Well done, Damon. Um, who else has got a question for us tonight uh, with regards to, well, it's open topic. So anything with regards to voiceover is more than welcome. So while you consider the next question, um, I'd like to remind you that Open Mic VO tonight is brought to you by our friends at VoiceSam. 
Uh, you may not realize this, but buyers may be giving up on hearing your full demos, and here's why. Uh, first, all voiceover demos contain multiple tracks, right? But a traditional player, uh, a web-based player, plays them back linearly from you know, the beginning of your minute and 10 second long demo to the end of it. So the problem is that buyers want flexibility. They want to be able to easily skip ahead to the next cut in your demo rather than having to listen to the seven seconds or 10 seconds that your first cut might be. So, and they don't like to be able to go back and re, they don't like to go back and replay tracks. They'd rather just kind of skip backwards rather than try and find a specific segment in your demo. So because the traditional player doesn't allow for that, they simply give up listening. But with VoiceZam's patented demo player, instead of just listening to your demos, your buyers can now engage with them by playing and replaying the segments, the specific tracks in your demo that they want to hear. That's because the VoiceZam player was designed with a buyer's workflow in mind. Uh, they naturally hear all the tracks in your demos right up to the last ones, and that means more bookings for you. Plus, with VoiceZam's easy-to-follow tutorials, you can have a professional demo player on your website in just minutes. When you add new spots in the, at the VoiceZam site, VoiceZam player automatically updates itself on your website, so you only have to uplate, upload the new segments to your demo in one place, and wherever it is you've got that player, it's going to automatically update. So there's no remixing, no web guru required. You've just saved a lot of time and a lot of money. Only VoiceAm offers you up-to-date analytics on listener behavior, so you can see exactly who listened and from where and for how long and how long, not just how long they listened to your demo, but how long they listened to each of the individual segments in the demo, which is very cool. So check out VoiceAm at voiceam.com. It's the only audio player designed from the ground up for voiceover professionals. Don't forget to use the open mic promo code when you sign up. So use the promo code open mic, O-P-E-N-M-I-C, when you sign up and you're going to get double the length of your free trial. So uh, once again, thank you to uh, Bob Merkel and to voicesam.com. Question from Haley, and this is a question that always elicits a lot of great conversation. Who are the best coaches in the biz? Who, if, if someone was looking to start coaching, where should they look? Come on, I know some of you have some, some serious thoughts, uh, some, some very strong opinions on coaches, so really want to hear, hear about it. Sandra suggests that um, she relies a lot on word of mouth, um, and then I look at their experience. So, Sandra, I'm, I'm guessing that when you say word of mouth, you're checking, like, the Facebook groups and stuff like that, um, because there's always lots of conversation going on in the voiceover Facebook groups about coaches and experiences with coaches. Um, Hi, Graham. Hey, Graham. Hey. Hey, it's Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Okay. Um, you know, actually, yes, uh, I go by the experience, the experiences that I've seen with fellow voice actors, how they've grown, uh, some of the tips that they give me, uh, and just their technique, how their technique has changed. Uh, and then I take a look at the experience of the coaches. Um, so, that that seems to work for me, although 
I, I pretty much stick with Vegas coaches, but um, I have been looking at some LA coaches and uh, that's, that's what I've been going by. I just go by what I see, the, the experience uh, that I see my peers get, I see the growth from them. Have, so, you, have you ever worked with my friend, Melissa Motes? Melissa Motes, M Melissa Motes is um, my guru. <laughs> awesome. She has taught me pretty much everything I know in the industry and I can, we don't have enough time for me to talk about Melissa Motes because she's awesome. <laughs> if, if any of you who are on the call with us tonight are in the Vegas area, uh, Melissa Motes runs a, a, a coaching school. Uh, the Voice Actors Studio. The Voice Actors Studio. Also and known as the Mothership of Las Vegas. He is out in Henderson, if I remember right. And she... And actually, she moved. She just moved. She was in Henderson, but now she's uh, more centrally located near the Las Vegas Strip. Fantastic. Well, I, I think the world of Melissa, she's one of the most positive people that I've ever run across. And more importantly, she's an incredibly talented voice actor who has an incredible resume. And I hear everybody I talk to that has coached with her, like you, Sandra, has nothing but awesome things to say about her. So uh, I think that we can all agree that Melissa Motes is a good resource to people in the Las Vegas area. Uh, yes, yes, she is. Thank hmm. you. Um, Damon says, hey, I've heard about Nancy Wolfson. Is she not considered the, the top dog when it comes to uh, voiceover coaches? Uh, she, Nancy Wolfson's based out of Los Angeles. I actually coached with Nancy uh, several years ago, and I think I'm a better voice actor as a result of, uh, of my time with Nancy. I can also tell you, though, that Nancy Wolfson made me cry twice. Um, she's tough. She is really tough. Um, she kind of builds this she her brand is kind of the tough love voiceover coach so um i do recommend nancy i think she's a good coach uh and she has a, a specific set curriculum which i found to be really uh, it, it was helpful that there was kind of a a beginning and a middle and an end to the program it wasn't this kind of nebulous ongoing um, okay, well, let's just get on the phone and we'll work through some scripts together. There was a very specific curriculum when I've always appreciated that about Nancy's, uh, Nancy's yeah. coaching. If you're curious about Nancy Wolfson, watch the YouTube videos of hers. I mean, it's, it's definitely tough love. She knows her stuff and I would give my eye teeth to coach with her. I can't afford her at the moment. Uh, but yeah, and it's mostly for commercials. I mean, it, she, she deals specifically with commercials. Correct. Uh, she started out as, I think, an agent or a casting director or something like that, and now she's a, a voiceover coach. So she, was she an agent. knows the business, and her people do book work. Yeah. Um, her people book work. Her demos are generally very well received. Um, she she but, works with a local yeah, Los Angeles. You have, you have to go into her with some chops because you know she's she's not uh, somebody that's going to coddle you and baby you. She's going to try to pull what she can out of you. She will work with new actors. I, I should I should make make it clear that you don't have to walk in when you say walk in with chops. You don't have to walk in being an experienced voice actor, but you have to walk in with a good attitude and be willing to work hard or she will rip you to shreds. I know that for sure. Um, Damon came up with uh, a resource for those USB cards. And let me just quickly cut and paste it so that everybody can see it. Thank you so much for that, Damon. I appreciate you uh, looking into that. Um, so Nancy Wolfson, we've talked about. Uh, Melissa Motes, we've talked about. Um, you know who I've worked with in New York and I thought she was awesome and she's not one of the voiceover coaches that's kind of bandied about most often in the Facebook groups and stuff. She, she isn't that well known, particularly amongst the non-union voice actors. And her name is Dorianne Elliott, D-O-R-A-I-N-E Elliott. And I think the reason why she's not so much known amongst us who are non-union actors is that she 
is a very busy casting director in New York and works almost exclusively in the union area. So I think that's why she doesn't get talked about a whole lot uh, in the non-union circles. So I certainly recommend Dorianne Elliott uh, as a, a potential coach if you happen to be in the New York area. Um, anyone else? Uh, Mark Cashman was mentioned by somebody as uh, having a good reputation. Um, Michael also suggests um, Anne Ganguza. I know Anne Ganguza reasonably well, but more, I, I didn't realize that she coached in the areas of performance. I thought she was more coaching in the areas of business and social media. Um, I wouldn't think of Anne kind of first when I was thinking about performance coaching, but definitely when it came to if you want to learn about social media and how to use social media as a voice actor. Uh, Deb Monroe is someone that Jim, uh, Jim Belyakoff uh, recommends. And Deb is actually here in Canada. Uh, she travels around a lot, but she's uh, not far from Toronto here. And she is, uh, she's a pretty awesome coach as well. Uh, Dave Fenoy is another name that uh, is being uh, mentioned. Um, a good resource if you're looking for, if, if you're new to the business and looking for an, an entree, um, I would still recommend, despite everything that's happened, uh, Edge Studio is a great resource if you are new to the business, edgestudio.com, and they have a great roster of coaches there. Um, if you have a little more money and you're looking for some of the bigger brand name coaches, I guess is how I'd put it, um, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswad, who are the people behind um, VO Buzz Weekly, which is this weekly awesome uh, video blog, blog where they do interviews with uh, voice actors and producers and coaches. They have a website where you can go for some of those higher, you know, brand name coaches. Mary Lynn Wisner is one that Lynn's mentioning. And again, I'm quite certain that Mary Lynn is available through this website that's run by Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswad. Does anyone have any, does anyone know what that website is? Uh. Opencoaches.com. Thank you, Sandra. That's right. Uh, Opencoaches.com. Um, and, you know, if you're looking for the uh, Joe Cipriano's, um, Mary Lynn Wisner, Mark Cashman, Dave Fenoy, these, what I'm going to call big brand name coaches, um, Opencoaches.com is a good place to go and find them. Um, you can book them through the opencoaches.com website as well, or you can just do some online research. And I, I'm sure if you can reach out to them directly and book them directly as well. Um, Gary Lewis is asking, um, He's interested in doing automotive work, auto dealerships. Um, so there's the big national campaigns for General Motors and Ford and Audi and so on. And those are all done through big ad agencies. But Gary's asking about what about all of the, like co the local commercials, uh, local commercials being done for dealerships. Is there a production house somewhere that does specializes in work for auto dealerships. Well, there's a, there's a coach, and well, not a coach, but a demo producer that's well-known, um, that's well-known, uh, attends most of the, uh, most of the conferences, et cetera. Um, Cliff Zellman is his name. And Cliff works for, I'm trying to remember the name of the production house that he works for. He works out of the Dallas, Texas area, and his, he produces literally 12, 15 commercials a day. 
you know, five days a week. He's, he pumps out hundreds of commercials a month, I think. Um, and they're all the typical local retail auto dealership stuff. So Cliff would be a good guy to reach out to um, because I know that he does do, you know, he's always looking to add new voices to his uh, roster when he's casting, uh, when he's casting for new dealerships. Um, anyone remember Cliff, the, the name of the, of the company that Cliff works for his day job? I know that, um, uh, I know Doug here on the, I know Doug's here tonight. Doug, do you know, happen to know Cliff's, uh, audio vision? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so the, the place Cliff works for in the Dallas area is called audio vision. So if you do a little bit of research into that, Gary, and, uh, reach out to Cliff, tell him that, you know, you got his name here through, you know, from Graham Spicer and Doug Durkell here at, uh, at open mic VO and just ask him, he's a wonderful, generous guy. And just ask him, how do I go about getting on your roster? And he'll tell you, there's no doubt about it. And he specializes almost exclusively in, in retail automotive. He's, he's the guru when it comes to that stuff. Uh, just trying to see if there's any other. Let's see if there's any other questions I've missed here. So Sandra is asking, when you're doing business development, do you find that you're getting more responses using email or cold calling, actually picking up the phone and dialing for dollars? Sandra says that she does both. And recently, a friend of hers who just happens to be a producer told her that she would actually prefer emails. So... Does anyone have any thoughts on, on cold calling, actually picking up the telephone and calling versus email? Anyone have any experience um, and, and have sort of a, an idea whether one works better than the other? Hey, Graham. Hey, Michael. I posted, I posted a link to uh, Cliff Selman's Amazing Demos site. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Check that out. So that's a good way to get a hold of Cliff if you're not going to call him at AudioVision, and I would suggest that you email him. Um, amazing Demos. He's, his demos are very expensive, but they're some of the best in the business. Sorry, just trying to get caught up in the questions in the questions box. Anyone have any thoughts on, on emailing versus cold calling? Okay, well, let's table that one as well for the moment. If uh, someone has some thoughts at some point with regards to uh, emailing versus cold calling when it comes to business development, please let us know. Who else has got some questions tonight about the voiceover business? Any question about the voiceover business is welcome tonight. This is interesting. Lynn saying, that there's a coach out there, there's a voice coach refusing to take students who are registered with voices.com. Um, that's interesting, Lynn. Do you wanna actually share with us who uh, that coach might've been? Uh, 
Yeah, um, this week on Facebook, and hi, everybody, and hi, Graham. Um, anyhow, this week on Facebook, uh, Bob Bergen posted that he has made the decision to no longer accept students who are with Voices.com. Interesting. So he will actually, if someone approaches him saying, I'd like to do coaching, he'll actually go to the Voices.com website and search. I, I'm not, he, he, didn't, he didn't go into specifics as to how he was going to do this. Um, I know that he has a cruise planned with him and Mary Lynn Wisner um, that's quite a bit off in the future. And he said he, that wasn't going to be affected because some people have already signed up for that. But he said, I believe as of April 1st, that he is no longer going to be accepting students who are with Voices.com. Now, the interesting thing is, I haven't been with Voices.com for three years, and I tried to get them to take down my name. You know, when people Google, it comes up Voices.com, and um, I sent in requests and sent in requests to have it taken down, and this is a common thing I've heard among a lot of people. Um, so I just kind of, you know, changed my profile page and I just, when people go to my profile, if they do do that, um, it says, you know, I'm no longer with voices.com and it's a very professional letter and, and it refers them to, uh, for a way to get into contact with me, uh, that I'm just no longer working off of that platform. Um, I'm just kind of concerned that this may cause, um, other coaches or other people to start judging. And I know that I'm not the only one doing this, um, that there are other people doing this. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I had clients through voices.com and the way voices.com worked very often, I never really had direct contact with those clients. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I kept my profile, you know, since they wouldn't shut it down, I thought, well, what the heck? if my clients come back looking for me, at least they'll know where to find me because I don't know how, I don't know how to contact them. So, um, but my concern is, is that other coaches or other people in the voiceover industry are going to just Google my name, see voices.com and draw this conclusion that's not for real because I haven't been with them for three years uh, and am not with them, but am, you know, having to use instead of, you know, this is what I'm doing. So, yeah, I mean, he, and this was, this, uh, this was an interesting statement. I guess what's happening is, is that now that voices.com is, um, ha has owns voice, you know, voice bank, they are now, um, dealing with union jobs. And I guess there's some things going on that Bob didn't like with, uh, you know, and this is, not, you know, I'm not really shocked, but um, that he have, was kind of fed up. And so he made a statement on Facebook saying he would no longer take students. Uh, that this were is signed James with in New Jersey. Com. Yeah. James in New Jersey. I would venture to guess, and I don't know this for certain, and I don't want to speak for Bob Bergen, but I would venture to guess it's a union thing. I mean, oh, yeah, it's absolutely a union yeah, thing. Yeah. Bob Bergen is, is very pro-union, and so are a lot of other voice talent that I know, as I am as well, which is why I'm not on the pay-to-plays, because I work through my agent. I try to get work uh, other ways, but I work through my agent. And I would think it's a an ethical, and I don't want to say moral, but an ethical issue with Bob Bergen uh, that... Uh, he, that pay to plays are, are really looked down upon by the union. Oh yeah. And, and I so got that. I mean, I, I so understand that. Um, uh, yeah, he, 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 he really didn't really delve into pay to play in, in conversations that I've had with him and, um, over the years because he was union and because it was out of their purview. But now that, um, you know, now that voices.com has taken over voice bank and, um, and there are now union jobs going through there. Yeah, he, he's very concerned and I, and he's seeing this and, and I'm, of course it makes perfect sense that he's, um, doing this and, and, uh, you know, and I applaud him. I mean, this is the stand he he's taking and that's very good. I'm just concerned that I don't, you know, I'm just concerned that there are people out there who have changed their profile page and, um, are trying to, to salvage certain clients they've had. 
and that, that it's not misinterpreted that they are provoices.com and that people need to be very careful in judging. They need to open up and read the profile page um, if they see someone's name and voices.com before they draw a conclusion um, because they may draw the wrong conclusion. Yeah, there's certainly no doubt that Voices.com, whenever it's it comes up, polarizes the conversation. And yeah. there's there's uh, it, it's really hard. I mean, even societally, it's very hard to quell a prejudice. And as far as the union is concerned, and I can't speak for everybody who's in the union, but this takeover with the voice bank and everything has really stirred up a hornet's nest. I think in the long run, it's going to be really good, though. I, I really do. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of shaken up the agents, you know, it's kind of like, oh, you know, they just would kind of get their stuff through, you know, voice bank and da, da, da. But I think it's, I think it, you know, it, it's a little painful uh, right now and it's a little difficult, but I think in the long run, I think it's going to be really good, really good for us. Yeah, I certainly feel that uh, voices dot voices dot com's acquisition of voicebank.net has finally brought the issue of um, online casting sites generally and voices.com and their arguably fairly questionable ethics um, finally it's been brought to the union's attention because for the longest time, for years, the union just pretended that the online casting sites didn't exist. And there is a role for online casting sites. Please don't misunderstand me. But certainly, Voices.com has a fairly, you know, you know, negative reputation when it comes to how they deal with voice actors. And now that they control, at least to some extent, control the distribution of breakdowns from uh, from union casting directors out to union agents, it's um, they finally are on the radar at SAG-AFTRA and other places that matter. And uh, you know, I, I think that, or I'm hoping that, at the very least, um, that they will. They'll be brought to realize the error in in some of their ways when it comes to how they treat voice actors. I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of. They, I think they've kind of poked the sleeping dragon. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um. Yeah, uh, Michael had said. Listen, I'm not sure I've ever heard of I've ever heard of Bob Bergen. Uh, Bob Bergen is a very successful union voice actor. He's the voice of Porky Pig. I um, mean, after Mel Blanc died, there was one other guy in the in the interim, and then Bob Bergen has been the voice of Porky Pig for the last I don't know fifteen years or more. And he also he's very busy in animation and in commercial work as well. Um, and he's a very well regarded voice actor, and he's a very um, uh, as Lynn had said, I think, or Jim had said, um, he's a very um, adamantly pro-union uh, actor. And he is regularly found on Facebook groups and in various forums advocating on behalf of the union to the larger voice, voice acting community. So um, we are out of time and done for the night. So we're going to wind things up. I want to once again, say uh, thank you to Voice Sam for sponsoring the show tonight. Remember to use that promo code Open Mike O P E N M I C at sign up, and that will double the length of your free trial period. So until next Sunday, work hard. Don't forget 8 p.m. next Sunday. We're going to stay at the 8 p.m. time slot. Um, work hard, audition a ton, get lots of work, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Good night, everybody.